Chakravati, Professor of Neurology from Nimans, Bengaluru, welcome you all to this great initiative from the Indian Academy of Neurology in the series Legends of Neurology. Professor D. Nagaraja, formerly called as DM Sir, is an epitome of intelligence, integrity, impeccable record, a great doing in the field of neurology. It's a privilege, honor, and I'm filled with immense gratitude to be sharing this platform with this living legend. Sir, you're a great teacher, an inspirational person, a living legend, and do not need any introduction. Welcome, Miss. Thank you very much, sir. Professor D. Nagaraja, Senior Professor of Neurology, Previous Director, Vice Chancellor at the prestigious National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, Nimans, Bengaluru. Many of us know his outstanding research, his dedication towards cerebrovascular stroke, especially CVT. Establishment of the stroke ward, which is still very much in the forefront at Nimans in delivering services to patients of stroke. But none of us know the hard work, the struggles, and his personal life, which has been instrumental in shaping this legend. This is a great initiative by IAM in helping us and all the others to learn the actual person behind the name, the answer. I'm filled with lots of gratitude, awe, respect, and honored to be sharing this space with this living legend, sir. All of us know that you are a person with mission, with lots of forethought. The impeccable work you have done as a director of Nimhans in being instrumental in establishing Nimhans as a premier institute, your dedication to the field of neurology. But none of us know your personal life and how you are as a person. This is a great opportunity for us to get to know you, sir. So let us start from the beginning. Kindly tell us about your childhood. I was born in a place called Turvekere, a taluk headquarters, which has only at that time 3,500 population. It had only one municipal school. I was born to a freedom fighters family. In fact, when I was still in my mother's home, my father was in jail because of the Mysore Chalo agitation. Her condition became worse. The doctor advised him to come back, but he was not ready to give apology to the government. He refused to get on parole and continued. And after that, he was released. She also became better, and I was born. still remember the first day of this school. There was no school building. It was conducted in a temple. First day, with a slate and a piece of chalk, I was taught the Kannada alphabets. In about one and a half hours or two hours, I learned the entire alphabet. I had nothing else to do. During the childhood days, I was a little rebellious, if you call it. In fact, I remember in the first standard, I hit back at the teacher who punished me for something which I thought is not right. Of course, that is the first and last, no such incidents after that. After the primary school, went to the middle school. I still remember the teachers, both primary and middle school. I stood first for the district, then I joined the municipal high school. In the school days, I was mostly with my grandmother. My father, who was a freedom fighter, he continued in Congress till 1953. Then Ahman Joyce, another freedom fighter of Mysore, a well-known top leader, closed my father's shop and asked him to join as an inspector in New India Assurance Company. He told uh, my father, Congress is no more for us. When I was in age standard, we had some lands, about four or five acres of wetland, about two and a half acres of dry land. We had given it to tenant, tenancy. I, had to, I was going with my grandmother to collect the paddy during the harvest season. After my, her death, in 1961, I had to go myself. I was still young, but I could manage to measure the whole thing, divide it into two, get it back to our house, and then contact the person for wholesaler, sell whatever is not required, deposit that money in the society. There was no bank at that time. So this gave me a lot of practical experience as well as confidence in handling things for the future. I was a bright student, obviously reading much more than what is required. I completed my SSLC with a distinction and a rank. I received a cash award from the state government for that. From the beginning, probably in the middle school onwards, I wanted to become a doctor. The reason is my mother was frequently getting ill and I had to go to the doctor in the middle of the night. So I decided that to become a doctor. National college I got in, the first batch of PCB. College was very, very inspiring, starting from HNR Simaya. Yes, Varda Deshikachar, Yes, T. Deshikachar, still remember their 
way how they taught us how to behave, what to learn, which helped me to develop my personality. After my PUC, I stood probably in the PCB group, third to the university. I joined the Bangalore Medical College. Bangalore Medical College experience was, though I remember well, nothing spectacular as such, except I was a good student, scoring well. Soon after my completion, I joined as a houseman. First houseman was in obstetric and gynecology. I was a meticulous worker, working almost 12 to 14 hours a day. The, all the staff nurses and attenders were so impressed. They used to get me food from their house or from the hotel. It's so nice to hear about your background. Freedom fighter father, which has made you the son of the soil, the intellect that started from childhood and eventually been instrumental in making an icon in the field of neurology. Sir, kindly tell us your journey, how you chose to be a neurologist. I think you initially joined DPM in psychiatry, but eventually joined neurology. This has been a loss to psychiatry, but definitely a boon to neurology. There was an opening in the Border Security Force, CRPF, and Indo-Tibetan Force. Three or four of my friends opted for it, and I was posted in West Bengal, the den of Naxalite movement. I was there for about nine months, ten months, and after that I came back. Dr. H.S. Narayan, I met him, he was a psychiatrist, he was a professor of psychiatry who retired. He, I was very much impressed by him. In fact, it's because of him I joined the first DPM course. But after some time, I a little uh, uncomfortable. At that time, psychiatry was riddled into various groups, physical, psychological. In that psychological also, Freudian, Adlerian, what not, and social. Then came the Handigod syndrome, a peculiar disease confined to a few villages of Sagar Talok. Government of Karnataka requested Dr. K.S. Mani to study this and advise them. He took us about four or five of our doctors. I was one among them because I had worked for six months during the MBBS, I mean, DPM period in neurology, well versed in neurology. So, four or five of our doctors, we stayed there in uh, Sagar Inspection Bangalore for four days, they examined all the patients who were collected there, brought there by one mother, social worker called Chandrasekhar. During this period, I came across with uh, Dr. Mani very closely. He used to go at 4 o'clock for a running, do physical activity, come back at 6.30 when Dr. Mani used to get up with a coffee. So I became a little close to him and he impressed upon me to join the neurology. Just then they, start, they were starting direct course in neurology. So I applied, I was selected and I completed four years of DM course in neurology in 79. I was very much impressed and trained by Dr. K.S. Mani, who was an obsessionist, in metric, so meticulous that even the pages to be filed was in order, in the case file. Same day, all the reports has to be filed, record notes should be dated and timed, and they should be the order, chronology. That obsessive behavior gave us also a good clinical practice. And then Dr. G.K. Ahuja was at that time here as an assistant professor. Later, he went to Ames and he became the professor of neurology and retired. He was regularly teaching at clinical clinics. Dr. Verma is another person who was I'm very much impressed. In fact, he was so magnanimous. When you request him something, he would give a certificate and the window pants, not an office, not application, nothing. It is a very casual and a very homely environment. In April 23rd, I joined the as a lecturer with a salary of about 1,100 rupees per month basic. And I continued. There was no automatic promotion at that time. So it was based on vacancy. Slowly grew up from lecturer to assistant, assistant associate, associate traditional. And after that, I had to wait for 10 years to become a professor. This experience, of course, was very, very gratifying. I had seen a lot of patients. If I start the outpatient, next only I leave it after the outpatient is over. Not even going for food in between. That commitment was possible mainly because of my teachers who instigated the same feelings. I had a lot of clientele in not all levels, including the political levels, administrators. This helped me a lot in the future. So really, it's an inspiration to hear about your journey, starting from the college, a psychiatrist, neurologist par excellence, and eventually the director of NIMHANS. You must have uh, faced a lot of challenges as a director. So can you tell us how you faced them and how you overcame them? 
I was called for a guest lecture in Udupi, this somewhere in 2002 January. I went there and after that, one of the doctors took me to around various places in the Taluk. There are two Ganesha temples there. One is Hatti Angdi, other one is Anegudda. In Hatti Angdi, there is a practice. They keep the flowers and decorate the idol. And you can ask the question, if it is positive, it will keep a right side. If nothing is going to happen, if nothing will happen. I was not interested or not, I was planning to do anything. But they forced me to go, gave me some four coconuts, made some pujas, and asked me to ask ask whatever I wish. I casually said, I would like to become a director of the institute. Still, I was not advertised. I gave a positive signal. I didn't impress. I said, uh, just coincidental I'll try again. I didn't tell anybody, but I did it. Then also it happened. It is then I decided to apply for the post, where that time already three contestants were there. So I applied. A lot of pushes and pulls and manipulations occurred. But of course, the gods will prevail over other things. And I was selected as the director of the institute in 2002. Of course, I have worked with four health ministers. It's quite a gratifying one. The first one was Dr. Shatrugna Sinha. It was very difficult to catch him. Even I met him earlier. He was very cordial. But his hours are not fixed. He would never have fixed in the hours in the office. He had a police officer, a PS. When I talk to him on phone, he will never pick up. Even if he picks up, appointment, if you ask him, you come to Bangalore, Delhi, we will manage. But you can't go and stay in Delhi for three days to get an appointment. Then came the help of our, one of my friend, Ambrish, who is another actor. He told me, doctor, don't ask for appointment. Ring up at after 12 o'clock. He himself will answer you. I had his phone number. I rang up 15 midnight. He himself picked up the phone. Then he recognized me. Day after tomorrow, he come. I went there 9.30 in the office. Went to the airport. It was November period. The flight was delayed. It took off at 7.45. Then Delhi, there is a fog. It was diverted to Raj, Rajasthan, Jaipur. Again, finally, it landed up in Delhi at 11.40. I was literally worried. A minister has given an appointment. If I don't go on time, I would definitely have it. Got out of the taxi, went straight to the intermediate bone. PAs are waiting. Dr. Rav, I'm trying to contact you frantically. For what? I said. Minister wanted you to come to his house for a breakfast instead of 9.30 in the office. Anyway, he's there. He's going to another meeting. You go there. I went there. As soon as he saw me, he came from his chair to the door, hugged me. Then I realized everything is smooth now. It's a memorable moment. Then he was quite cordial. I fixed up the appointment of the convocation. Secretary was very, very worried. We got to be fixed up at 11.30. Everybody knows that his day starts from 12 o'clock. Made him by accommodation in Achoka Hotel. I went there at 9.30. Saw to it that he came with me. 11 o'clock, he was very much here. Secretary at that time, he didn't see him. He said, is he going to come? Then it happened. Everything was went smooth. Then we had a shortage of 5 crores for the budget. In the lift of Ashoka Hotel, I asked him, Sir, this is a problem. I require 5 crores, otherwise everything will go standstill. It will come back, come to Delhi. I went there. Then he called the additional secretary. Told him that it should be given 5 crores. It happened. Whenever I go and ask them, they say, let the state give or we will give. We are giving proportionately. Then I realized the entire ministry was thinking in advance as a dignified mental hospital. Nothing more. I realized that we have to educate them, otherwise this board creates a problem is going to be created. So I started a new program, invited everybody from giant secretary to the secretary and minister for a regular periodic visit, make some occasion to call them, and then have a sort of a regular predefined visits. This used to impress them very much that they are doing a high-end work, not just mental hospital. So then they became slowly, they started increasing the budget. And finally, when I left, it was from 25 crore to 75 crores, and a plan, plan, non plan budget also improved similarly. Shatrutra Sinha was changed, and Sushma Swaraj became the health minister. Of course, I personally knew her earlier. For Golden Jubilee celebration of February 2004, I invited the Vice President of India, Sri Bhairav Singh Shekhawat, along with Sushma Swaraj, who was the health minister at that time, and the governor of Karnataka. Later, the next convocation, was held in November 2004 when I invited 
Deputy Prime Minister of India, Sri L.K. Advani, along with the Governor of Karnataka. We were having a problem for getting a gamma knife for the last about 10 to 12 years. Our never our budget was allocated for the gamma knife. With pestering, they would say in November or December or one month before. There is some money left. You can take it if you want. Nobody could advertise because we have to give one month time to advertisement, tenders, and then accept it and start the payment also. Otherwise, you can't use that next year. So this was a vicious circle. Then I, Malka Reddy was the state minister. I told him, I'm going to raise this issue. I want you to support me. He was the vice president of the institute. So during the speech, I mentioned that the gamma is such an important equipment, a bloodless surgery, which will help the institute so much and patients at large. It is very much required. I want you to consider this and make necessary orders. He took on from this and then it went on that the institute is so good, the doctor is doing so much work, you should accommodate this. And then Sushma Swaraj also came in very handy. Dr. Saab, aage bado. Once this assurance came, Dr. Tadar announced in the meeting that Gamma and I will be sanctioned. 10 years, we are not, 12 to 12 years, we are not able to get. Within two days, I got a call from the secretary to come to Delhi regarding the whole proposal. I was, I, uh, they asked me, well, how much money you want? I said, 16 crore is okay because tentatively that was the money that was required. Take 20 crores. Sanction was given. We advertised, tendered, and the meeting was held. LC was open and it became a reality. This is how the first grammar life came to this institute. Then, of course, next minister was Anbumani Ramdas. Ramdas was very, very meticulous, hardworking. One of his close friends knew me well. He had explained everything about me to the minister and he was quite cordial. I used to meet him most of the time, apart from the office. Whenever he comes to Bangalore in the airport at transition, I used to have at least one hour, two hours time to discuss with him. This is how we enhance the national mental health program from stipulated 250 crores to 1000 crores. I explained to him what are the needs of the mental health in this country and what the ministry has proposed was 250 crores, which will not touch anywhere. Yes, you do it. Within about 15 days, we had a national consultation meeting in Bangalore, in Imams, thought about the proposal, which was in our mind, gave a shape, few things were added, and we submitted to the ministry. He asked me to present in the finance committee meeting as well as in the ministry's uh, consultative meeting. So that helped to achieve this thousand crore. Then there was a problem in relief of money for this program. Chidambaram finance minister at that time. Then he uh, wanted me to come to his chamber. He fixed up a meeting. I went with the minister, explained everything, and then emphatically told the minister that money has to be released. When he agreed, immediately released about 600 crores. For another one, they wanted a report of what happened to the existing program. Even that, ministry wanted it to be a third party audit. They selected a third party. In fact, we have to give all the data to it. And that also came in. This is how a mental health program from 250 crores went up to 1000 crores. And that continued. During the entire 10 year period where I was the director, I never took appointment either with the minister or with the secretaries. They were so cordial. They say, it is your office. You come anytime. They used to accommodate in between the meetings. So such was the cordial environment which went on. During Dr. M. Anbumadi Ramdas time, I planned for a total transformation of the institute. In fact, many new activities came up. All the laboratories, pathology, microbiology, virology, neurophysiology, all the laboratories, clinical laboratories, they were rebuilt, space was enhanced, equipments are added, new facility was created for rehabilitation thing. We used to have a waiting list for CT scan, three months, MRI, six months. We have sufficient manpower. They used to work only for a few hours a day. I gave extra radio efforts, made the available around the clock, plus added two MRIs additional and three CT scans so that CT scan should be done on the same day, MRI to be done within one or two days. There's another important objective for that. It was the money earning to the institute. When I took over for the last two years, total annual returns for the institute was three crores, three and add. Within two years, it went up to 21 crores. It didn't increase any rates. Two things I added. One, of course, sufficient MRI and CT scans, which were the money spinners. Second, lot of loophole in the administration in collection. In the sense, they used to just write off 
and nobody bothers whether they pay or not. So we made it a point that only medical superintendent or the director can wave off. In two years, the whole money went up to 21 crores. Because we had a lot of problem earlier to me, they always had a problem shortage in the last few months. Institute has to survive, government cannot give all the money. Though it kept on increasing, but still we had a shortage. That shortage was met by stringent administration, increasing the activity which stretches money. Special wards are added. We had a large waiting list for psychiatry special wards. So two blocks were added. So first ever stroke unit in the government setup was started established in the man's. That Chanavasana was the director at that time. I went and met him and impressed upon him the requirement of this facility. He was asked me to prepare a program. I prepared a program of creating some positions, some beds, and ward. Luckily, at that time, our body was being shifted to the new block. I proposed the private wards, five by five white wards, and about 11 beds in the two operation theaters that was. One was the ICU, other one is a step down. First time, they asked us to give some additional information. Then I prepared a systematic program of what is the benefit what is the inflow, outflow, how much we can earn. It was a very excellent proposal. The finance secretary was so impressed that he said they discuss the sanction. It became a reality contributions of the institute. Our BSL-3 facility, gamma knife, functional MRI, neural navigation system, and endoscopic equipment, PET CT, confocal microscope, yoga center, stroke unit, dedicated casualty block, including three operation theaters, open psychiatry block, expansion of the private wards, and many more. With the increasing plan grant, we had to plan the activity also smoothly. If you want something to come up next, start next year, one year before we had to plan the whole process. So we prepared a blueprint for the whole period of five years. That is how we added up about 500 beds in the hostels. One new hostel was created by itself. Then uh, the Govind Swami block, it was started as the academic block, rehabilitation building, new casualty. Because at that time, I still remember casualty. Patients were seen in the exam and in the window plans. There was overcrowding. So we created almost 100 bed facility casualty, which has three OTs, labs there only, two CT scans. Then the de-addiction center was enhanced, increasing, adding another two floors. Ayurveda was expanded. The achievement during this period was the introduction of yoga and integrating Ayurveda with allopathy. The yoga center was introduced mainly as a research grant. I brought in Dr. Gangadhar and told him we have to work as a project mode. Though the project was in general, general program, we introduced various conditions where it is likely to be improved. And such conditions studied, nearly 30 publications came up in national, international journals on yoga and mental health, making it thus acceptable. Similarly, Ayurveda unit existed for many years, decades, but it was isolated. We introduced at least three, four projects in various neurological conditions. We got at least three PhD students get their PhD in this area. And after the five-year break, we introduced yoga as a yoga center as a regular facility. Now it also has teaching programs like MSc, PhD, MD in Ayurveda, nursing college and hostel. 50% increase in the postgraduate strength, including increase of faculty strength. In all the deep sector, new courses were introduced, including BSc, MSc, PhD program in all departments. With the help of ICMR, we introduced PhD program across the discipline and transdiscipline. In fact, to help the research, we built the Neurobiology Research Center as a common facility. There was a declared slum within the campus of Nimant for the last about 15 years or more. It was already declared, patta was given, electric free connections were given, they were all given ration cards, there's no way of shifting them. There was a lot of friction, they spoiled the area, cleanliness was not a mere. In addition to that night, thinking brawls. I remember still as a faculty that Chanabasuna took all of us to the chief secretary's room about this problem, asking his help. He only advised us not to fight. Don't go physically. There is all benefit we could get. Nothing happened after that. During Professor Gauri Devi's time, they had a meeting with slum clearance board, Nimans, and one or two representatives of the slum. It was decided that Nimans will give one acre of land, and they will relocate. One acre was given. They also built the historic building for them. But the major flaw there was there was no return agreement. They are not consented to relocate. Uh, started putting pressure on the slum clearance board. You have already constructed, shift them. I really put pressure on them. 
and one day it was fixed. They came with the bulldozers and asked them to go and whoever is the one to go, they can them take their belonging and go. But between the agreement and later, they had planned for about 2,000 people, a few number of houses. They had already done an inventory. Another 1,000 people had joined there who were not given any house because they were not there earlier. Some people went, some people stayed back, and we ended up having two slums, one inside, one outside, side to side. I was in the office. Nine o'clock it started. Some demolition occurred. After that, a lot of resistance. The, the local district in charge minister came to this part and scolded very badly the slum clearance person and the police and made them to stop the work. So we were in a real fix. The news came to me at 9.30. Immediately I called up Loka Yukta. He was in his office. So I went there, explained to him everything because we used to meet frequently and various aspects. He said, this is a problem. He rang up Mr. S.M. Krishna was the chief minister at that time. He said, send him, send the doctor in. I went there and explained to him everything. I don't think he understood anything in detail. He told the, his deputy secretary at that time, who was in left, uh, number two actually, Mr. Shankar a very upright IS officer. He understood everything. In front of me, he called up the IGP. I asked him to go back to this spot, demolish the entire area, hand over the land. I came back to the office at 12.30, and at 1 o'clock, the secretary came to me, handed over the, handing over papers, signed, I signed and took it. Postism was taken, the entire land. Now it is a beautiful garden there. Otherwise, this land would not have come to us. The major contribution has been in getting the land which was lost way back in 1770. After I became the faculty, one Mr. Sridhar Murthy, who was the assistant engineer in the engineering department, came to me with some papers, mainly Pahani, saying that this land belongs to the institute. Nobody is taking care. Nobody is trying to get it back. You tell the director. She has just then become the director, Dr. Gauri Devi. So when the, he gave me all the papers, whatever that is with him. She was just staying next, next door to me. One day afternoon, I went there explained to her, showed her things. She said, yes, but afterwards, nothing was moved. When I asked her again, she said, the registrar will take care of it. I told him that 12 years are getting over. We don't do anything now. We may lose it permanently because adverse position will come into effect. So no, 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 no adverse position for government land is 30 years. I stopped at that. Nothing happened after that. Five years later, I became the director, setting straight one by one. He then registrar came to me showing a newspaper advertisement. There is a builder has given an advertisement that they're going to construct a block in this future land. What already in his position? If you want me, I will uh, initiate the proceedings. I said, yes, definitely we'll do it. He had hired a, a lawyer who had put up a case for injunction against the third party. It went on for a few months. Our plea was rejected. Then we went and appeal against it because we were very sure that we want to get it land. Nothing happened. Appeal was also not considered. Went to the High Court also. Then I realized we need to look at it a little more in legal point of view. I then got collected all the papers, examined myself, as well as one senior lawyer, Mr. Visheshwara, who is no more. He gave the clear picture to me with regard to this land, what we should do. The other party has already got a permanent injunction against the man. Asking for injunction against it, it is meaningless. That is why we are losing the case. Then I changed the lawyer sat with the lawyer for, for 15 days to draft the petition meticulously. He also gave me the clue what I should get. We didn't have any records at that part of point of time, except those two Pani records. Nothing else was there. So our hunt, though we filed the case, it was registered, okay, fine. But it takes its own time. In the meantime, he started constructing the building, multi-story building. He has already built about two and a half to three floors. We fought against that. Finally got a stay for that for some time. Then I sent my assistants to go and search at the DC office to get some records. Luckily, when Chandrasekhar is there at that time, he was a clerk in the office. He got some file in the Nalamangala records, not in the Bangalore city records. That gave us some idea. This is a copy of the acquisition proceedings. The land was acquired some back in 44 by Maharaja of Mysore for sanatorium. It was later handed over in 72 or 73 to the institute, 14 acres of land. Other than that, there were no other records. We need to have records for acquisition. That is mainly taking position. 
there there was a reference in the case they had filed a case earlier before the final injunction they withdrew and modified a new case copy of the previous case which was decided in 1992 and other one of 82 where they withdraw the lot of crews came to us we got hold of records 100 years on this land it clearly became clear that it never owned the so called claimants who got the stay injunction never owned this land they had already sold in 2019 22 24 and 34 it never belonged to them even before the acquisition that gave us a strong feeling and another thing is the court proceeding it had gone to the court that we know for a compensation enhancement of compensation at least we get some proof will come then uh, justice siriak joseph for the chief justice of high court karnataka i went and met him that is the problem district court has to give us the records he rang up to the justice civil magistrate so i went and met him he happened to be known to me they told me if you give the number we can search for you no number was known no date was known i said uh, let me myself search i went to the record room you should see the record room it is about 20 feet high room with ladders so we have to go and search each one there are some order which nobody knows full of test i started searching one or two then they care to the person in charge that's all give me five days time i'll get you something went back let's stay over he gave me the case records have been destroyed have you ever the entry is there in the notebook on the book keep a ledger of cases in that ledger there the mention that second appeal so then i knew that it is gone to high court again went to the registrar high court request for the records of this purpose there again there is no number no date they gave me that uh, there is no record available again went to the chief justice he requested him permission to work uh, search myself i can't send anybody also no they personally went and sat in the record room from 48 to 54 all records all case records were judgments were kept no other details like judgments were kept file by file search for one and a half days myself personally i knew the names nothing else would have been there. i knew the person who is the, who is the owner so on that uh, stage they got the record got a copy certified copy and placed all these records in the case file i personally went to the court to give evidence because if i send anybody else they would have smashed them they won't allow them to and they nobody would know also you have to know the 100 years history of the record land to give evidence that is the real work it took me about totally about 4 5 months in one of the high court orders we got a order saying that it should be examined day to day hearing and finished that is how this record was completely filed and we got the judgment in fact he went an appeal to the high court high court also gave a approved that land belongs to us in fact appraiser has written one para of appreciation towards my work in this case another important development during this land is that two rowdies came and threatened my wife to advise me not to continue in fact i had to take police protection both to me and my wife for nearly 2 3 months they were there I always had a security with me in fact uh, it is very gratifying when this happened i was in delhi with the secretary a phone call came to me that such and thing has happened secretary he assured me he wrote a devo letter to the sec- chief secretary to make the necessary arrangements that the support has been coming from all through initially we never had any police protection nor support any amount of complaints we give they would not take action obviously so more than that the builder was connected to one of the major politician who was controlling the whole issue sir tremendous contribution in all aspects of neuropsychiatric specialty both in the clinical basic sciences as well as integrative medicine among all this i think the biggest challenge was getting the disputed land to new hands it's really an all moment to know that you literally were there in the records department as a director trying to get the appropriate papers a big salute to you sir we all know how the covid pandemic affected all of us in the last two years similar natural disaster to happen in your time if i am correct the thunderous tsunami can you kindly tell us the difficulties that you faced and how nimhans rose to the occasion during tsunami In the early 2005 or 6, suddenly news came in televisions and newspapers of the havoc of tsunami. In the information was scanty. At least it appeared that it was a massive damage. Very next day, I sent Dr. Shaker to visit Tamil Nadu, Andhra, and Kerala 
and find out what is the damage, what is the psychosocial requirement of this population. In two days time, he came back with a detailed report. It was really alarming. Very next day, he called a meeting of faculty and residents and requested them to voluntarily participate in this mammoth task of psychosocial care of tsunami victims. More than 60 people volunteered. Badges were sent to Andaman Nicobar Islands, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, and later on Andhra Pradesh because Andhra Pradesh damage was limited. These teams spent nearly two to three months in these areas. Not only they helped the affected population, they also trained the local volunteers, teachers, and government workers to handle the psychosocial requirement. And also de-stress programs were conducted for the government servants who are involved in the care of these patients in Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Looking at the work that we have done in this area, ministry recognized demands of the nodal center for psychosocial care and refused the international aid that came for it. In about two years, we had the German GNK earthquake. Our team went there, stayed there for almost a year, not only in caring the population who are affected, but also developing manpower to handle it in future. At that time, I noticed that JNK had only few psychiatrists. All of them are situated only in Srinagar city. So the entire 39 district did not have any psychiatric help. I personally discussed with the chief minister as well as the health minister. They dispatched almost 35 people, medical officers, for one year training for some and three months training for others. We trained them and sent them back and they are posted in each district so that at the end of one year, every district of JNK had a trained psychiatrist. Looking at the work that we carried out, JNK government gave us an appreciation and an award. So kindly enlighten us about your academic and research contributions. I was a student of DM. Then only the institute started having regular autopsy. Dr. Mani was very keen on autopsy of all deaths. We almost have 99% death autopsy. He was so very methodical and persuasive. Everybody used to give a consent. It was limited to brain autopsy only. So we also picked up that habit. And there was a regular brain cutting as it is now on a Tuesday afternoon, Dr. Desh Pandey. We had a lot of CVT cases where autopsy was done. I observed one thing, that all autopsy cases had hemorrhage, extensive or otherwise. When we realized the CT scan was introduced just then, only 50% had hemorrhage, 50% did not have hemorrhage. That means patient progresses over a period of time. Initially is non-hemorrhagic, then it became hemorrhagic. If you are able to intervene in between, probably we can make the difference. Heparin was used for various requirement. I started using heparin. One wonderful thing that I observed was within 48 hours, headache used to disappear most of the time. But I was scared of hemorrhagic infarction occurring or bleeding occurring. Nothing happened. One or two cases we did repeat CT, nothing happened. Then I put up a project. Money was sanctioned for that. Up about 30 patients each treatment without treatment. Totally 59 patients were there. We observed during within the first two, three weeks, the clotting parameters used to go haywire. You give for three doses, fourth dose, the APTT has gone up. Then we had to reduce the dose. Even when you reduce the dose, outcome was good. So we changed the protocol to only 2,500 units, eight hourly, subcutaneously, no intravenous. The results were good. There was no death in the group. Then we titrated the dose between 2,500 to 5,000 three times a day. It was slightly better. Still, uh, mortality was just about 5%. That is how we established the low-dose heparin therapy in CBT. My DM thesis was a non-dominant hemisphere stroke. That is how I came to stroke. Then we started looking for various factors in stroke. We took 40 years of the cutoff point, multiple risk factors, including cardiac. We had a routine echo, various chemical para biochemical parameters, lipid profile, lipoprotein, various coagulation parameters, protein C, protein S, antithrombin, and various genetic workers. Almost all, most of the genetic risk factors were looked at and were published. In fact, I should recognize here the role of Dr. Rita Christopher, who has systematically carried out the work and continued the work even after my leaving the institute. Another new area which introduced the proteomics it was new to at that time. In 1993, I was fortunate to work with Dr. James F. Toole, Winston Salem, North Carolina, and Professor McDowell, Rehabilitation Center, White Plains, New York under WHO fellowship. I was also fortunate to be a co-author 
in his textbook Conserver Vascular Disease by James F. Toll. In late 80s, neurologists became restive that neurosurgeons are dominating in the NSI. In the Manipal meeting, it was decided to have an Indian Academy of Neurology. Dr. Chopra was in the forefront. He became the first president. Second meeting probably was held in Patna. Other was, third meeting was held in Chandigarh. Fourth meeting we conducted in Bangalore in 1996. I was the organizing secretary. At that time, to conduct the meeting was not easy. Nobody recognized Indian Academy. Dr. Sudesh Prabhakar, who was the organizing secretary in May, did not have funds even on the first day of conference. He was wondering whether he would be able to pay the various charges or not. But I was lucky I was able to good contact, got the sufficient money, saved about 20 lakhs and put it in the Asian Trust as a corpus. Conduct. Product, the conference was held in Indian Institute of Science Auditorium. At that meeting, I became the General Secretary of the Indian Academy of Neurology. I took over from Velu Murugendran. It was the infancy stage. We made it systematically. There was no, we had to do it our own, ourselves. There was no separate office. A few years later, general journal was started. Subsections were started during this period. New orations were introduced. I was elected as Vice President. Automatically became the President. So this was a blessing in disguise, not continuing as, as General Secretary. 2002, Dr. Gauri Devi was the editor of the IAN Journal. She relinquished her office. I took over as the editor. At that time, problem was the articles were not forthcoming. We would really beg people to, because it was still infancy, it was not yet indexed. Getting a journal regularly at period of time was the issue. I managed somehow to see that, oh, no, it's a, no indexes. No discontinuity of the journals. Three years regularly brought out. So that paved the way for indexing at a later date. After I completed my tenure in 2012 November, I was invited by the Karnataka government to take over the director of the Darwad Institute of Mental Health and Neuroscience. It was in a rudimentary state, though one of the oldest mental hospitals of the country. Within a matter of two years and ten months, I could plan, construct the hospital, hostels, quarters, introduce postgraduate programs, create 132 posts in one go, and fill up most of the clinical departments and the paraclinical posts and nursing posts. After that, I worked for a period of two years as a director medical in the S. Vyasa Yoga University and helped them to standardize the procedures. Even after my retirement, my association with the institute continued. So the instrumental in getting the integrated medicine department and introduce training programs, build the new facility, planning for the North Campus and the land given by the state government to us. Detailed master plan has been created and has been placed before the government for approval. Though I have given a big list of uh, achievements, activities, developments, it is not that I have created it. I am only an instrument to the will of the Almighty. I wish to thank all those who work with me to make it a reality. In addition, I must thank my better half who has tolerated me for more than 45 years and supported me all through my journey. I was blessed with one son who is also a neurologist. He was the professor of neurology at Bangalore Medical College and currently at Swansea, UK. Thank you, sir. Thanks to Indian Academy of Neurology. Thanks to Mr. Kutendra from the Digital Academy at Nihans for this recording. Bye, everyone.